last time I made a plant video, it was about a year ago. And you guys seemed to really like it. So I decided it was time to do one again, but this time with a little bit more color. I wanted to go with something that was colorful, but yet really cool. So, some shade plants? That's right, shade plants. These plants thrive in the cool or in the shade. They like a little sun, but not too much. Of course, we have the Astelbees with their colorful plumes. No shade garden is complete without hostas. Caladiums give a tropical feel to anything. And of course, my personal favorite are hydrangeas. The lovely thing about these particular plants is they're made mostly out of paper. Although I have a little aluminum and a little bit of uh, chenille pipe cleaners in there too. I'm Kat Williams, and I hope you guys liked this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. As with the last video, I'm using some containers from around the house. This is a miniature party cup from a dollar store. This is a cap from a conditioner bottle. I don't remember the brand. It's been floating around in my purse for a minute, so it's a little grimy. This is a cap from a whipped cream container. It's a generic store brand, and it still has the preparations from the peel-off tie at the top, so you may wish to lightly sand it before using. And then finally, the top from a container of lip balm. I'm going to paint these with solid colors. With the exception of the whipped cream container, because this has a star design on the side, and I don't really want to go through with some um, wood putty and completely remove it, but I do want to just kind of help the camouflage it a little bit. So I used a gray paint as a base coat, and then I modeled it with some black and some white paint and a sponge, just to kind of help to um, cover the stars with texture. Once my pots are prepared, I'm going to start with the smallest one first. This is going to house some hostas. And for the hostas, I'm going to use some wire. This is about 20 gauge. And I cut this in lengths of anywhere from between 3 quarters of an inch to 1 and a half of an inch. And then I'm using this bond tape. Um, again, this is aluminum bond tape. It's backed with paper and adhesive. And um, this is a 3M brand, but the last time I used a generic, um, just like, store off store brand type of thing that I ordered on e online and to be perfectly honest I like that one better even though it was thinner so with this tape I'm going to go on ahead and cut this into some strips and the strips are anywhere from a quarter inch to about three quarters of an inch and then I stack several of them together and just start started cutting out leaf shapes they bow out at both sides and they form a point in the middle cut several of these. I used maybe about 50 or 60 for this plant. Then you can use the tip of your blade to separate the paper from the actual tape and stick a small piece of wire inside each one. Close the tape up, and then I'm going to use a little glue to secure it on either side. And unfortunately, I was recording this partially during the move, and partially before the move, and partially after the move. So a lot of my footage was destroyed or lost. But I did use a ball tool to emboss it with some veins going in the front and off to the sides. Then I painted the whole thing green and gave it two coats. 
and then I went through with some white paint and went along the top and for some reason this piece got deleted too I used a styrofoam block in the bottom of the container and then some glue to cover it and then I just started to layer my hostas moving on to the caladiums I'm going to use some dark green and some light green copy paper I'm also going to use some wire and a red marker and a green marker I couldn't figure out how to best support the leaves in this so I decided to go with a paper cone if I were to do this project again though I would just use a styrofoam piece again so I made a cone out of a piece of paper and just taped it up and then I went through and cut some slits this cone is really just meant to add some support and to hold the shape of the plant I use some E6000 to glue the cone in place inside the pot and then I put some additional E6000 inside each of the holes then I fed pieces of wire inside each one and painted the whole thing in a dark green with some light green and even some red accents then stacking together several layers of dark green and light green pieces I cut out what is best described as a heart shape with the exception of the ears of it are pointy instead of round so kind of like a fox head or a cat head shape I don't know <laughs> and then to add some variation in how the leaves looked I sometimes cut it little dips into the sides I made quite a few of these, maybe about 20 in each color. Then, using the dark green leaf first, I'm using some red paint just to kind of fill in the inside. I want to leave that outside in the dark green. Now I'm using a green marker to kind of draw some veins on the inside. You might have to go over your color a couple of times just to make sure it shows through. And you can even use paint for this if you'd like. Then I used a little bit of dark green paint and just went along the outside rim of the plant. using a red marker I added some additional veins onto the dark green rim as well and then back to the green marker to add some smaller interior veins onto the red and then onto the light green leaf I use white paint to fill in the inside of this and keep the line fuzzy at the end don't paint it on neatly you want to kind of stipple it on and then I used some dark green paint and went through and did the same thing just around the edge this way the light green peeks through and then I use red paint in this case to go on ahead and add little lines on either side for the veins 
and then one dark line down the middle. If you use a slightly watered down version of red paint, it kind of gives it a, it spreads out a little bit and gives you like a watercolor effect, which is really what you're kind of looking for. You can feel free to go through and add some green veins on these as well. And then I'm going to mostly support these using the wire and also the sides of the container. So I put some of the green, the darker green leaves along the outside of the container, gluing those in place against the pieces of wire. And then I continue to go up with the dark green ones. And then I started off with the light green ones, overlapping some and tucking other light green ones behind the others. I reserved about five of each color and attach those to separate pieces of wire. Then I pushed the wire into any blank spaces that I could and allowed the wire to protrude ever so slightly out from the plant. Paint those green as well. That way it looks like they're stems of some of the caladiums that are kind of extended from beyond the plant. And onto the astelbees. I'm using some wire and some dark green paper and pipe cleaners of all kinds of colors. I'm going with orange, red, light pink, and darker pink. Then I painted several pieces of wire, um, about one and a half to two inches each in a dark green. And I'm using some tacky glue in this case. But the E6000 worked just as well, if not better, because it dried faster. And I'm just pushing some of the tacky glue onto the bottom and then pulling it up and letting it stretch out so it forms a teardrop shape. The tacky glue dries mostly clear, but some of these are E6000, and I bet you can't tell which ones. Then I used some paint and painted them in the colors that I want them to be. Again, red, light pink, dark pink, and orange. Then using my pipe cleaners, I'm going to cut off about three inches of chenille on either side of the pipe cleaner. Just use your scissors and cut off a little line and turn it slightly and cut off a little more of a line and keep going like that until you've got a um, middle section that's mostly bare and roughly fluffed from about three inches of pipe cleaner. Then you can coat your flowers with some glue and then roll that into the flocking. Then of course you can roll that in between your fingers. It will continue to keep that shape that you made out of the glue and you can kind of preen it as needed. This doesn't need to be too neat. Um, Astelbees actually have a little additional fluff on either side which I omitted for just the ease of getting the work done. And then I used some white glue on the top of the styrofoam and stuck each of the flower heads on into it. I used some dark green paper just to wad it up and put it along the sides. And now I'm going to paint the whole base of this brown. Now because the Astelbees have such small leaves, I know some of the soil is going to show through in this case. So I'm going to go in ahead and add soil to it so that you can actually see the soil showing through. I'm using some coffee grounds and some glue to do this. Mix the coffee grounds and the glue to form a little paste. And of course I prefer to use coffee grounds because they don't have that same odor that regular coffee grounds do. So basically I use them and put them to the side and I usually soak them for a little bit in water and then later in vinegar. 
and then I allow them to dry out on a glass plate for several days until I use them. Sometimes to speed up the process, I'll lay them out on a cookie sheet and just bake those for a minute. Then I'm going to use this hole punch. I've used this before in my Koi Pond video. And this is the punch that I use probably the most often for flowers. I don't own a whole lot of flower punches, but I love this one. It's the best. Now I made six leaves to go on either side in groups of two. And I'm facing these in a unheard of manner of out to the sides. And that way when you're looking dead ahead at the plant, there's a forest of green that you wouldn't see if they were turned the correct way. So basically I'm using them the wrong way to take up additional space in the plant. And to keep me from having to make additional leaves. And the lovely thing about this particular punch is it came with another piece that allows you to texture the leaves. So I textured these and cut them out. And this time I placed them on the stems the correct way. And I'm using E6000 to secure it because you just have to dab it in and stick it to the plant and it holds in place. And then of course I'm going to stab the plant, the separate leaves without the flowers, into the sides of the plants. And as you can see, it takes up a considerable amount of space on the side, but it still looks a lot more realistic because these are done the way that plants normally do look, with the broad side of the leaves facing up to collect the sun. Then I add some light and dark green paint that's been watered down for color variation. And then finally the hydrangeas. I'm going to use some green paper and some punches from some tissue paper. And I'll tell you more about those in just a little bit. I use some styrofoam and push that in a container and then use a knife to kind of cut it off into a rounded shape. I just want a little bit of a mound at the top. And because this base is going to be covered almost entirely in leaves, I'm going to go in ahead and paint it green. And then I cut out several shapes of green leaves, the same as I did with the hostas, but these are just out of paper. I'm going to lightly emboss them with my ball tool, but you're not going to really see this embossing. Um, it's just kind of there. You do see a little bit of it if you're close up. And then some E6000 to glue groups of anywhere between four and six leaves into various spots on the plant. These I curve slightly around the ball tool and it just gives them a little bit of a rounded uh, center. And then I'm using floral tape for this, but I really wish I'd use tissue paper. I just needed something that would, you know, wad up tightly enough to hold its shape. And then you can use a little E6000 to secure each of the floral paper um, balls into the center of certain flower patches. I went along the rims with paint just to kind of give myself the color that I was drawing for. And with some of these blank edges, I'm going to put the appearance of baby plants in it. So I punched out some additional smaller pieces with the same punch that I use in the Astlebees. And then this is some paper confetti. It's tissue paper confetti. And I purchase this almost every year around Easter time. Walmart sells it, and of course, if you don't want to purchase it um, for 99 cents during that time, you can wait till clearance, and then it goes up to 50 cents. And you can also get a, a small hole puncher and punch out your own colors with tissue paper. But I love the confetti mix because, as you can see, each of these colors of purple, while still purple, they are entirely different shades. Then I used a small piece of uh, foam and put several of the dots on top of the foam 
and then use my ball tool to push the dot inward and then push it in place into the glue. So I've added in some pink, some purple, and some blue flowers. Hydrangeas uh, depend a lot on the acidity of the foil to determine the color. So I wanted to represent all three colors in this case because that is entirely realistic to have all three colors of hydrangeas in a garden. Additionally, I made some green ones to put on the inside as the babies because they all start out like a green or greenish white and then they change to the color they were going to be as they get a little older. And then to highlight and accentuate the leaves a little bit, I'm going to use some lime green paint that's been watered down along just the inner section of the leaf. And then some dark green paint to go along the top so it looks like there's a bit of a shadow cast. And then slightly along the edges. Then, using a Sharpie marker, which won't bleed, I'm going to draw a vein down the center and several off to either side. This looks entirely cartoony and unrealistic, but it's going to get better, promise. And then use some dark green paint to just kind of cover the leaf veins a little bit. And the leaves on the hydrangeas are not a showstopper. You just want to make sure that you can see some sort of veinage and that the light green is peeking through and the dark green at the edges. And that's it. You're done. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.